third quarter from the Western Oval. Footscray lead by five points after they led by 15 at quarter time. That in the back or holding the ball? In the back. Free kick going Footscray's way to Brian Royal. Played a very good game today, Peter. He has. 16 possessions to Choco, as he's affectionately known. Almost a mark to Ironmonger. Tried to get the hand pass out to Murphy, couldn't do so. Umpire Robinson will bounce it. Just the same half forward. Pete, he's had a lot of help from Purser. Purser, in my opinion, nearly the best player on the ground. Crow wins that one away from Ironmonger. Knock on by McLean, picked up by Royal again from half forward flank. Royal a long shot, could just about be a score, but Carter standing in the road in front of Beasley and Liberatore, who's on the ground for the first time to take the mark. Carter from back pocket right. Ironmonger and Persa, man in front, no mark paid to either, picked up by Jep, couldn't get clear. Williams, Healy, right around Persa, right on the boundary line, nearly ran out of bounds with the ball. Too long for Hawke. Ball fisted away by Rance. Cordy. Stolen by Hawke. No one to give it to. Goes backwards to Healy. Good tackle out there by Perza. Jep. Oh, bad hand pass. Down goes Hawke. Got one a little bit too high and he'll take the free kick. Not much skill on the part of Jep that time. Good. Like a cow with a cup of tea, Pete. Hawke from right centre wing. Good mark taken by Jimmy Edmund. Certainly not the most popular player here at the Western Oval this afternoon. Edmund, long kick in front is Cordy. At the back is Kennedy. Footscray's defence working well. It's combined well right throughout the afternoon. Royal again. Gathering plenty of possessions in the early part of this third quarter. Over the head of the pack. Steve McPherson's been watching the World Cup, but it didn't work. Carroll. Carroll back towards half forward or centre wing and the mark is taken by Purser. Strong play by Purser today. A hand pass coming out wide. Oh, messed up that time by the uh, Bulldogs. Hawke gets the ball over now. It goes down there by right. And a good mark to Edmund. Getting on top of Callot. Back to right again. From about 50 metres out. Chance for more with the mark. Well stopped by Hardy. Right on the goal line there. It's through for one point. Well, there's no doubt about it since about halfway through the uh, second quarter, the Swans have looked a lot better. And, of course, they've had a bit of bad luck or bad kicking. They've had 12 shots to six. And uh, they should be in front. Which way looked good. There's a bad kick in. Grabbed there by Mitchell, but Egan goes after him. He grabs him. Umpire calling play on. Determined play that time by Egan. The ball is forced out of bounds. But it's still within kicking distance of the Swans' goal. It's only about 30 metres around. On that outside of the ground, as we said before, a pretty good crowd here today, around about the 25,000 mark. Which means the Swans are a very good draw card now because they're a top side. Ball picked up by Wright. Ooh. Oh, he got one too high that time for McLean. And he'll take the free kick well within kicking distance. The angle's pretty acute, but he could easily kick this one. Watch it again. Got him right around the neck. Just about strangled him. So he's got a chance to score a goal and will put them in front. Into this quarter by just over three and a half minutes. That's the third quarter. There's the kick. But uh, once again, the Swans are off target and it's through for another point. So it's 31 plays, 28, a difference of three points. 13 effective shots to six, Lou. Well, they should have been in front because they've played a lot better since uh, about halfway through. That's a bad kick and a good mark taken here by Negan. Eagles right on the 50 metre mark, a quick hand pass coming over to Carroll, a long kick, that's a magnificent kick at the goals, but they're off target again, so the difference only two points now. So this could cost them the game, but Footscray will have to play a little bit better than they're playing at the moment. They've only got about four players firing, ball back into play by Rance, it's a long kick over the, up towards the half back line. Tui gets a hand pass back to Williams, another hand pass out to Healy, no doubt the Swans best player. And Healy's kick is over the half forward line. Kappa's there and uh, punched out by Kennedy. It's Hawk coming out of the pack away from Hart. He spins out nicely. And Kappa's got his first chance to kick a goal for the match. I think he's only had one touch for the game, so Kennedy's had him pretty well covered. But this kick here by Kappa from about 15 metres out directly in front could put the Sydney Swans in front. And we're just on the five-minute mark of this third quarter as he runs in for this kick. Takes his time. It. 
No, it's a goal. Very close. It looked mighty close, but it's a goal to Kappa. That's his first. And, of course, it's the Sydney Swans. Four goals, 11.35 to Footscray, 5-1-31. So the Swans finally hit the front here at the Western Oval. Footscray leading throughout most of the first two quarters. Kappa's first goal. And Footscray have only kicked four. The others two, Mitchell, Morwood and Hawke. For Footscray is Steve McPherson, Royal, Beasley, Hawkins and Crow. Seven's big league from the Western Oval, five and a half minutes into the third quarter. That was Warwick Kappa's first goal. Ironmonger contesting the knockout. He'll contest against Perth. There's been a good duel between those two. Healy puts the Swans into attack up towards Danaher at half forward. Dummies the hand pass. Goes long into the square. Kappa and Kennedy again. They're backing up well. That was uh, Egan. Egan's kick is out towards Jep, who couldn't take the mark. In goes Stevie Wright, tries to beat Royal to it. Finally picked up by Jep. Jep's kick back towards the edge of the square. Ironmonger runs into trouble, gets out of trouble to Murphy. Steve McPherson can't catch him. Back to Tui. Through the mud heap. Well shepherded by Neagle. Long ball by that player up towards the full forward position again. Two foot straight players nearly spoiled each other. Kennedy comes out with the ball. McLean. To centre wing. Tui and Steve McPherson. Great mark by McPherson. McLean. Over the top of Holden, on the Libra Torre, around Carroll. Kick is short, over the 50 metre line, Royal, will he look for Petraglia? No, like a true rover, has a shot, won't quite make the distance, Beasley! Beasley directly in front, opportunity for Footscray to once again hit the lead. He's kicked one goal already, being brought round at a little bit of an angle. I don't think Carter saw him, Lou. I think Carter was off balance, Pete, too. If he gets this goal, this could lift Footscray because they badly need one, Pete. For goal number two, Simon Beasley, point-blank range. Only 10 metres out. It's a goal. Beasley second. Footscray hit the lead again at the Western Oval. Seven's big league scoreboard. 6-1 to 4-11. Footscray by two. Well, that goal could lift the morale of the team because it was sagging very quickly. That's good play on the part of Royal. Royal and Perth are doing a great job uh, for Footscray. That's a strong mark. Poor old uh, Carter was off balance that time. But he's done a great job to keep uh, Beasley out of two goals so far. Beasley, the leading goal kicker in the match today. He has two. And the rest have been shared by a number of players. So the match developing into a titanic struggle here at the Western Oval. Seven's big league from the Western Oval. Two points in favour of Footscray. That was Beasley's second goal. Centre bounce again. Pushed out that time by Wallace. But over to Healy doing a great job for the Swans. Oh, that'll be a mark to Edmund. He's well on top of Callot. Got off to a slow start, but since about halfway through that second quarter, like most Swans, has really come into the game. Oh, there's a Russell going. That's just about a mark. He's going to pay that too. I think it could have been a free kick to Wallace against Williams. They've had a great duel. 15 metre penalty against Williams. Well, I think you'd have to pay that. Yes. Said, that was a great mark. A bad kick coming out here now. We see the ball grabbed here by Murphy out there on the centre wing position. Two points the difference. It's a crackerjack game as the ball goes back into attack for the Swans. The ball hits the deck. Wallace goes down. He's down there with him, but the umpire will ball it up right on the 50 metre mark uh, in the Swans attacking zone. The Sydney Swans on the scoreboard, 4-11-35, shocking kicking for goal. The Bulldogs, six goals, 1-37, the ball up again. Williams with a good hand pass to Hawke, he's grabbed, he's put off balance. Down goes Danaher, gets it back to Williams again, out wide, looking there for Mitchell. Hawke is there, kicks it off the ground, backs up well, good play by Mitchell, knocked it out of his hands. It's Hardy once again, always on his own to McLean. McLean balks. Gets around, uh, oh, they're messing about down there. He gives it back there to Hawk and back uh, further towards the back pocket. Two Swans have a battle there, but it'll be a free kick or a mark, I should say a mark, to Neagle. Liberatore's got him well guarded out there on the centre wing position. The Bulldogs in front by two points, but not looking as strong as they did in that first quarter and a half. Oh, Mark dropped that time by Rance, picked up by Kennedy. The chance here uh, for Carroll, he dropped that one. They pile up there and there'll be a ball up. Down towards the centre half forward position for the Sydney Swans, who've been into attack. Malthouse not looking too happy. Standing room only in the box. That's right. Pretty serious when the coach starts to stand up in the coach's box. This will be a ball up for sure. But uh, the Sydney Swans have been into attack uh, since midway uh, through that second quarter. And the Bulldogs haven't got their running game going yet. 
Knocked out by Purser. Hawkins juggle that one and finally throughout the pack. Danaher's weaves and dodges, comes out of the pack, looking for Kappa, guarded by Kennedy, fell over. Bad luck and Kennedy takes the mark. Kennedy, the two fullbacks doing great jobs. Kennedy balks around Kappa, shrugs him up. As the ball comes back there to, to Wallace, he should grab this one. He does. And he's got the mark there short of half back. A quick bit of play on over to Mail and shows. Oh, well tackled by Murphy, put him up, balance, this gave Browning the chance he needed, he nearly got one, he got clear, sends the ball back, and there we see Hawk taking the mark at the centre-half forward position, they're looking a lot stronger than Footscray at the moment, Pete. They're combining much better on the forward line, Kappa couldn't take that grab, Kennedy's hand passes a wild one, Roberts and uh, McGuinness do battle, he goes over, picked up by Roberts, whistle has gone, free kick will go Footscray's way. Well, he gave that free kick about 30 seconds too late, actually. Only four kicks to McGuinness and three handballs so far in the match. So he hasn't been the leading possession gatherer for the Bulldogs, I would imagine, without looking at the stats. That would be Doug Hawkins. But McGuinness to take the free kick at half back right flank. His kick to centre wing. Crow and Carroll. Browning and Royal. And by Robinson will bounce it just off the edge of the centre square. 11 and a half minutes gone. First, uh, uh, third quarter. Ironmonger and Crow. Crow wins it. Down to Neagle doing well in this third term. On the Healy. Good hand pass over to Williams. Wallace in pursuit. Williams' kick is a long one up towards full forward. Could bounce through. Has it done? I think so. Kennedy touched it, but over the line. It's a goal. And so the Swans hit back again. They hit the lead by four points. 5-11-41 to 6-1-37. It's a great passage of play there. Neagle getting that out to Healy. Williams from 55 metres out. Bounced it in the square. Kennedy did touch it, but he was over the line. The goal umpire in perfect position. Williams's first goal restores the lead for the Swans again. From Footscray, four points in favour of the visitors. 41 plays 37. 12 and a quarter minutes gone in the third term. Mitchell for the Swans will put them back into attack again. The hand pass is on to Hawk inside the 50 metre line. Looks for the hand pass. Danaher weaves, shoots. Could be another one. Wait right on the goal umpire. It is. The Swans are light at the Western Oval. Two very quick goals, and they lead by 10 points, 6-11 to 6-1. Well, they've taken a while to get their game together, particularly down there on the forward line, but they're running hot. Good play on the part of uh, uh, Einmunger as he tapped it out for the second time to the little fella, Mitchell. A beautiful hand pass over to Hawk. Balk's unselfish play. Danaher's got a balk again. Gets around his opponent nice to straighten up and kick an easy goal to put them 10 points in front. Danaher's first goal. This one, six goals, have indeed been kicked by six different players. Beasley has two for Footscray. He's their leading contributor. Other goals for Footscray have come from Crow, Hawkins, Steve McPherson and Brian Royal. A new ball comes out to replace that one, which has disappeared amazingly into the crowd. Well, there'll be a raffle in one of the Footscray pups on Monday night, I should imagine. Excellent game of football for our match of the day. The Swans lead by 10 points. That's the biggest margin that they've enjoyed over Footscray so far in the afternoon. 13 and a half minutes gone. They've had plenty of shots for goal. and They're playing a lot better than Footscray. Down goes Wallace. They won't let him get clear. Out it comes to Royal. Royal boots the ball back out there looking for Liberatore here. And Holden having a great battle, but Holden's too strong. Goes for the hand pass, plays it safe. And the ball is out of bounds on that centre wing position. We approach the 13 or 14 minute mark of the third quarter. And the Sydney Swans looking good. They're 10 points in front. 47 plays, 37. Well, out there on that half forward line, we see uh, McPherson having a great battle, but they're finally forced out of bounds. Well, they looked a mile in front. Einmunger limping. That'll be a blow because he's had a very difficult job against Purser. Knocked out by Einmunger. Grabbed by Neagle. Now it goes now to Tui. Tui over to Holden. They go back into attack again, but the umpire said it's out of bounds. So it's still out of bounds on that centre wing position. Ten points the difference. Einmunger not uh, looking too good uh, with that left leg. They won't want to lose him. Knocked out by Crow. Hawkins with a hand pass to McLean. A long kick over the half forward line. Ball tapped out. Oh, good play by Carter. That could be holding the man, but the umpire didn't think so. And finally it's probably a free kick in out of the spot. 
Hyde Munger in plenty of trouble. He, he looks as though he could be coming up the ground any tick of the clock as it comes out wide now towards the wing position. There's a race. Healy and Hardy, two of the most prolific kick getters on the game. Now, Hardy with a brilliant bit of play. Gets it over to Cordy. Cordy goes for the long kick over their half forward line. Crow in the box seat. He's got the mark. Too big that time for Ian Roberts. He'll be 50 metres out from goal. And they're trailing by 10 points. And boy, do they need one, the Bulldog, because the Sydney Swans are playing well on top of them at this particular stage of the third quarter. Oh, look at that for a kick. One point. So the difference now, nine points. A shocking kick by Crow. Now, when you look, there's uh, Heinmunger still uh, jogging around, not looking the best. He's coming might up be the coming ground. up. He's trying to... Yes, he's coming off the ground. That could be a blow. They'll bring Coleman on, who's a pretty capable player, too. Will he have his hands full with Person, the way he's playing at the moment for the ball ball. Remember, though, they've already lost Mark Roberts, too. That's right. The ball back into play again. Hawkins. There's a good mark. He's been a great play. He's got on top of Neagle. They've battled half for a quarter, but he's got on top a short pass. Drop by now. And this gives Browning a chance. Knocked it over now. The ball comes back to Williams. Over to Coleman. Just coming on the ground. They go back into attack. And there we see Kellett getting away from uh, Edmund to take the mark. Out wide. Hawkins again. As Pete said, I think he's had more kicks than anybody on the ground or more possessions. Oh, lippertori has got no hope here. 20 possessions to Doug Hawkins. It's good play on the part of Mitchell. Over to Hawk. Back to Coleman. And the Swans continue to go back into attack again. Egan in front. That's a strong mark in front of Stevie Wright. He's played well down there, Luke. Hand pass to Hawkins again. I'm getting sick of yelling his name out as he sends the ball back. Missing that one that time was Carroll. Picked up again by Rance. The kick is a short one. Grabbed up on the first uh, bounce that time by Holden. Back it goes. Rance showing a lot of determination. Back it goes now. And the ball kicked back by Wallace. Over to Crow. Balks. He's in trouble. He gets a hand pass looking for Marla. But he ran into a brick wall and he's upended. And the umpire will ball it up round about the centre half forward position for Footscray. Just over the 17 minute mark of this third quarter. 6 2 38 Footscray trailing the Sydney Swan. 6 11 47. Nine points in favour of the visitors. Half forward for Footscray, taken away by Williams, not very far, certainly. Umpire Ian Robinson will repeat the procedure, almost in the identical position. It's been a good quarter for the Swans, they've kicked three goals. And that makes it their best term of the match to date. They kicked 2-5 in the second term, 1-3 in the first. Crow, Tui, good tackle, Steve McPherson. Carroll tries to get it to Mitchell, not successful. Again, a big pack of players, again, the same result. Bounce this time at the 50 metre line. Coleman against Crow. Niner gets a tap at that one. It's a real scramble out there. Well, it's pretty ragged football for the last, it has been for the last 10 minutes, Pete. It has. Good opportunity to go to the fridge and get a can. Knocked away by Coleman. McGuinness. Holden. They're all thumb. Finally, it's Neagle to get the hand pass out to Murphy. Murphy from centre wing. Well, tried to bounce it in the mud. That's a low percentage ploy at uh, this stage of the game. Up towards half forward. Too long for Egan. Kappa gets grabbed. Can't get clear. Might be a free kick here. Umpire Russo coming in pretty quickly. Kappa's looking for the free kick. Perhaps there's not going to be one. The bounce right on the 50 metre line. The Swans in attack. Over the top, Purser, down to Mitchell, picked up by Neagle it was. Finally out to Stevie Wright, he's well shepherded on the boundary line. Wright's kick into the square, in front is Morwood. Might be a free kick, he's got it. Well, there was a bit of interference there, what did you think? I think it could have been a free kick there to Morwood uh, against uh, Gordy, but he was pretty desperate, he was backing back into him. You're he's backing into him. I don't know, he, I don't think it, well, it was a pretty doubtful one. I think he was a bit lucky to get it, Pete. From 10 metres out. Has squeezed it in, I think. Yes, it's a goal. And so that's two goals to Tony Morgan. He becomes the first Swans player today to kick two. 7-11-53 to 6-2-38. Well, he's such a dangerous player, this fellow. He uh, was unsighted for over a quarter and a half, but now he's come back into business kicking two goals since then. Mickey Moldau standing on his feet with his uh, brains trust there. McGuinness off, forward on for the Bulldogs. Well, I think they had to take McGuinness off. He hasn't been playing that well. Seventh big league from the Western Oval. 
as we approach the 20 minute mark of the third term that was Morewood's second goal and the Swans enjoying the biggest lead that they've had for the afternoon Hawk goes down picked up by Hardy flips his way through the pack how did he do that a long kick by the Footscray carrot off up towards half forward opportunity for Tui and or Steve McPherson beating all of those players Rance over the top hand pass is good to Petraglia he can just about score from there long shot Beasley and Carter Beasley great grab this is a great mark because uh, Carter was really concentrating on him that time he was bustling pushing him shoving and that was a strong mark by Simon Beasley you watch this now he's grabbing on doing everything he possibly could to stop him from marking that a strong mark by Simon Beasley Beasley's kicked two goals already point blank range he's only 15 meters out directly in front he doesn't miss these hasn't missed that one three to Beasley put straight come a little bit closer a badly needed one certainly seventh big league scoreboard 7 11 to 7 2 the Sydney Swans lead by nine points and we're just on the 21 minute mark but there's no doubt they've played a lot better in this uh, last quarter and a half good play on the part of rounds and little Petraglia have been a little quiet today kicked it up there and see the uh, effort that uh, that Carter put in on against uh, Beasley, but he was far too strong and determined. Three goals to Simon Beasley, the leading goal kicker in the match to date. Mark Roberts comes back on for the Swans. Coming off as two. Well, that's rather surprising because he's been a pretty good player for them. Seven's big league from the Western Oval. Nine points the difference. Beasley's third, 21 and a half minutes into the turf. Ball knocked out by Coleman. Over there it goes now to uh, Morwood. Back to Healy. He's grabbed. Oh, good tackle by Wallace. He says throwing the ball. That was a great tackle by Wallace. Now that goal may have given them a bit of encouragement because they were starting to flag a bit, the uh, Bulldogs. The kick is over the half forward line. The players set themselves, pushing and jumping, going on. The umpires got it run. And it's foot straight into the offenders. It'll go to Carter. Carter down there, shorter centre half back. Now the old tilt's looking where he can kick this one to the best position for his team. Murphy got up high. He recovered better, but well tackled by Marlon again. He gets it back over to Neagle. Neagle with a hand pass to Williams. Bork beautifully away from Wallace. Over it goes again to Neagle. And they're full of running. Bork again by uh, Neagle. A hand pass coming over to Moore. He's already kicked two goals. It was too long for White, but uh, backing up well as Hawk. He's grabbed by Hardy. The umpire call play on this allowed Healy to pick it up. Back it goes to Mitchell. Oh, fumble. This has given uh, McLean the break he wants. He's got a paddock to run in. He runs 20, 30 metres. Short pass. Too long for Rance. They're making mistakes, the Bulldogs. And it's Carroll driving it back with a long kick. Wallace at the back, and he's grabbed that mark. A hand pass over to Ford. Sends it out wide to Marlon. Marlon's away from his uh, opponent this time, Murphy. He goes for the kick, looking there for Beasley again. He's got it. A beautiful lead and a magnificent pass by Mail that time. Now he'd be about 40 metres out from goal. He's already kicked three. And of course, if he kicks this one, it'll make it three points the difference. Five marks to Simon Beasley. Great mark and a great lead by Beasley. A pressure goal for the uh, Bulldog full forward. Coming up now from about 40 metres out. He'll probably kick this on the 50 metre mark. There's the kick. He's off target. And it'll be a mark down there to Coleman. So Coleman's got the mark right in defence, deep in defence for the Sydney Swans. Bringing Crow back so he's got room to kick. Nine points the difference in favour of... Uh, there's the back there's McLean worried about his opponent here instead of going for the mark and that allowed Williams to take it to the back of the pack then. So 15 we handballs for Williams and six kicks. Well, you don't know how well that bloke's playing. Knocked out by Cordy, away from Morwood. The umpire call playing as Neagle spreading in the pack as he gets it back to Williams, really coming into the game. Now, look at that for a pass, a ripper. And Healy, their best player by a mile. Creating the loose man beautifully today as he sends the ball up there, looking for Kappa. Kappa and Kennedy have a go at that. Kappa got one hand to it, trying to hand pass it out to a right going by. But Kappa won't give in, they'll ball it up. About 20 metres out from the uh, Sydney Swans goal as we approach the 24 and a half minute mark of this third quarter in a crackerjack game. Seven goals, 11-53, the Sydney Swans to Footscray, 7-2-44. Nine points the difference. Kappa, well tackled by Persa. Stalemate again. And so a ball up about 20 metres from goal. Kappa's only kicked one this afternoon. Leading goal kicker for the Swans is Morwood. He has two. Healy. Good tackle, Libratore. Edmund grab. Williams. 
That was touched off the boot. So tapped down by Percy to Hardy. And he caught him. Kick. One or two. Finally picked up by Neil Cordy. His kick is a long one round towards the outer side. The mark taken by Carroll over the top of Rance. This fellow's a real pressure player, Pete. Good player, half back or half forward. And he can kick a ball long, which he does on this occasion once more. At the back, Purser should have taken the mark. Got two hands to it. Good tackle by Wright. Comes to Tony Moore, but he's already kicked two. That's going close. Make it three. Goal umpire says full points all clear. And the Swans making the most of their scoring opportunities now to go to 8-11-59, the Bulldogs 7-2-44. Well, I don't know whether a person made a mistake there because he could have easily gone for the... You watch this now, he's got a chance to mark it here, but he went for the mark, he could have gone for the punch. I think he was pretty confident, of course. The hand pass went astray, roved beautifully by Morwood. As we said before, out of the game for a quarter and a half, a quarter and a half. now he's back kicking three goals up to this stage of the game. A very dangerous player indeed. Well, I guess Purser was confident about going for the mark. He was above the pack, clearly. Got a couple of hands to the ball, couldn't hold it. And the end result is Tony Morwood's third goal. 15 points the difference. We're over one minute into time on in the third quarter. The Swans enjoying a pretty handy lead. Coleman breaking out of the pack. Spiral punt kick towards half forward. Capper and Kennedy. Kennedy's had him well covered so far today. In front, Edmund. Ball very close to the boundary line as Edmund looks for a free kick. There's none there, and the throwing will take place 40 metres from goal. Done a good job today, Rick Kennedy, the Footscray captain, on the Swan sharpshooter. He's held him to one goal, and remember, he's the leading goal kicker in the competition so far. Chance for Murphy to take the hand pass, which he does from Hawke. The snapshot is going close. That's not bad. It's full points. Great snapshot that, and Murphy puts through his first goal, and the Swans go further ahead. They're looking good at the moment. They lead by 21 points, 9-11 to 7-2. Pete, I think that's the biggest lead either side's enjoyed for the entire match. I think 18 points was the most that Footscray led by at one stage. Good hand pass that, and an excellent snapshot. Right over the top of the goal post, but the goal umpire in perfect position gave it a goal. Murphy's first, and the Swans looking good now in the time-on period. Just over the 27-minute mark, and uh, the Sydney Swans in front by 21 points. Ball knocked out by Crow. Williams again, really bouncing back into the game this third quarter. Swans player down, Kappa flies, knocked out by Kennedy. There's a go for Hardy, can't pick this one up, but he won't let anybody else get near. Williams again, intercepted by four. They up in, that was uh, Mitchell up in. Even the umpire said he was pushed in the back. Could have been a bit lucky. So Ford to take the free kick out there on that half-back flank position. They're trailing by 21 points and not looking good at all. 15 metre penalty, this brings him up to the point of the square. Still in defence for Footscray. Goes towards centre half forward. Plenty of swans there, they were too big there for uh, Hawkins. Picked up by Carroll, out wide by the uh, swans uh, skipper, but a good mark taken by Wallace. Over it goes to Carroll, a bad bubble. The umpire got on the way, that's a shocking hand pass. This will give Williams the chance to sock it off the ground after Mark Roberts is coming back onto the ground. Over there to right, another hand pass to uh, Hawk. And they are oh, great tackle. No, the umpire didn't pay that to Keller. I thought he might have got a free kick going through his head, but that's another good tackle by Egan. Kicked off the ground by uh, Royal. Tough football out there by both sides. Oh, Hawk had no hope then. Down they go like nine pins. Once again, it's Williams out to Healy. Now Danaher drives it long, looking for Kappa. But he's pretty well covered, but he's put it out of bounds on the full. And that'll be a penalty free kick down there to Kennedy. The Swans looking really good now. Just on the 29-minute mark of this third quarter. And they're in front by 21 points. McGinnis back on for Malin. Waiting now for the ball to come back into play. Kennedy kept Kappa down to one goal. Ball knocked out that time. Wallace's kick is smothered. They're making plenty of mistakes as Crow sends the ball back out wide. And McPherson's got it out there on the centre wing position. Quickly plays on, but he's kicked it to no one, actually. There's a chance there for McGuinness. Good play. That might have been a good move bringing him on the ground. Petraglia. But he's well grabbed by Roberts. Roberts still, but Petraglia breaks clear. Brendan play. Runs for an open goal. But there's Carter. Carter and Beasley fighting. It'll be holding the man against Beasley. And Carter will take the free kick. They've had a great battle down there today, those two. And, of course, Beasley's kicked three goals. Tilt gets it out there now. And there's a mark to Coleman. He's replaced uh, Einmung, who went off the ground in this third quarter with an injured leg. But Coleman doing a pretty good job. Chance for Crow to mark. Danaher's there, 
tries to get clear, struggles with the ball, and the umpire said it'll be a ball up. Out there on the centre wing position, we approach the 30-minute mark of this, the third quarter, with the Swans looking good. Nine goals, 11-65, to Footscray, 7-2-44. First of three-quarter time. Coleman has done well since he came back on. Ford goes down, can't get the ball into the open spaces. It comes out to Coleman again. Looks for the hand pass, finally, to Stevie Wright. Wright's kick up towards the full forward pocket. Out comes Kappa, misjudges it completely, picked up by Kennedy. Under plenty of pressure, though, back to Kellett. Kellett's kick is high, up towards the square. Ball knocked past Ford. Socket away up towards uh, the centre-half forward position, and ultimately it's Williams having a shot at goal. And that went through. It is through. It's a goal. Right on siren time, two feet. Right on the siren time. It actually, I thought, had rung before he kicked that, but of course... The siren isn't effective until the umpire raises his hands. The score at three-quarter time is 10-11 to 7-2. And we watch it again. Williams directly in front of goal and puts it through right on the siren. A very valuable goal to the Swans. And at three-quarter time, it's 10-11, 71 points to 7-2, 44 at the Western Oval.